What's good YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to add energy into your music videos or your edits inside After Effects. We're going to be adding movement as well as energy into three regular scenes in order to make it look more dynamic and just to add that extra sauce within the different scenes. So without wasting any more time, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into it. So here in After Effects, I have these three different scenes of Dave from the Sprinter music video. And as you guys can see, we just have cuts throughout these three different scenes. And what we're going to do in order to get started is we're going to start out with the first scene i'm going to create that zoom in effect in this first scene i'm going to add a transform effect to this layer and we're going to keyframe the position as well as the scale in order to create a camera zoom in effect where it zooms into our subject's face this layer is 14 frames long and we're going to go forward 13 frames just so that we can still see our layer i'm going to keyframe the scale at 170 and then i'm going to adjust the position where we have our subject right in the middle turn on the proportional grid you can more accurately create this effect where our subject is right in the middle so i'm going to have it like that because we're creating the zoom in effect there is a transparent edge at the top and in order to fix that what we're going to do is add a motion tile add that above the transform effect increase the output height to 200 and click mirror edges and just like that we don't have a transparent top edge anymore we're going to then grab these keyframes and easy ease them make sure to have your motion blur on and then go into the graph editor of the position keyframes i'm going to create my graph like this where the influence is at 100 it animates in fast in the beginning and then it animates out slow i'm going to create the same exact graph for the scale keyframes and then i'm going to grab both of these keyframes and just move it towards the end and now if we play this we have that zoom in effect in the beginning it's really simple but it can definitely just add that extra energy to your footage especially when you have the motion blur on that is the first way to just add some movement into your footage now moving on to the second scene we're going to be creating this rotoscope background slide transition where we have the top part of the background sliding towards the right and then the bottom part of the background sliding towards the left in order to create that effect what we're going to do is rotoscope our subject so so make sure to double click the layer and then grab the rotor brush tool to make your brush bigger you hold the control button and left click and just drag your mouse it will make your brush either bigger or smaller and if there's any unwanted parts that you didn't want to rotoscope hold the alt button and left click and just drag over and that just gets rid of any unwanted parts i'm going to now rotoscope my subject it's always important to go frame by frame to make sure that everything was accurately rotoscoped the way you wanted to. And my rotoscope did a good job of capturing it the first time. So after you check that everything was accurately rotoscoped the way you wanted to, click the freeze button and that's going to lock in our rotoscope subject. After hitting the freeze button, go back into the composition. I'm going to increase the feather to 10 and decrease the shift edge to negative 60, just so that our edges do feel smoother. I'm going to then duplicate this layer two times. So make sure to click control D and click that twice click the bottom layer and i'm going to delete the rotor brush effect for that bottom layer also going to rename these layers just to make it easier for me dave bg bot because i'm going to be masking the bottom part of that layer and this one i'm going to name this dave bg top because i'll be animating and masking the top part of the background layer and you also want to delete the rotor brush effect for the middle layer because that's going to be part of the background that will be animating only the layer at the top is going to be a rotoscope layer in order to create that slide transition for our background grab the rectangle tool and turn on the proportional grid so we can see where our rectangle tool will be masking we're going to be masking the top part of this background layer so we want to be masking out that background exactly where the middle is for the top layer as well as the bottom layer so make sure to mask out the top layer exactly in the middle so that we don't see a transparent background and then we're going to do the same thing for the bottom part of that layer where we mask out the bottom half after accurately masking out the top and the bottom part of the background layer, we're going to now add a motion tile effect to this top layer in order to create that background slide animation. In order to do that, keyframe the tile center, click that layer and click U to reveal the keyframes. We're going to go towards the end and I'm going to have that background slide animation happening in a cycle of nine times. So if you multiply 960 times nine, that's 8,640. I'm going to then bring that layer towards the end and then I'm going to add a motion tile 
effect for the bottom part of that background layer and keyframe the tile center but this time i'm going to be having the bottom part animating towards the left because it's going the opposite direction i'm going to be keyframing it at negative 8640 grab that keyframe bring it towards the end grab all these keyframes and easy ease them make sure to have the motion blur on for both of those layers i'm going to then go into the graph editor of the top part of the background layer and i'm going to have it animate in fast in the beginning so have the influence at around 80 percent create the same exact graph for the bottom layer influence is going to be at around 80 percent so it's going to be animating pretty fast in the beginning and then it's going to slow down towards the end i'm going to then grab keyframes in the beginning and just move it back one frame just so that the animation is still happening as it cuts from the first scene into the second scene and then grab these two keyframes at the end and move it forward two frames just so that right when the animation cuts into the next scene the animation is still going on rather than having it completely stop and we always want to have movement throughout these scenes as they're animating we're going to then grab these three layers and pre-compose them and then I'm going to create a shake flash transition between the first clip and the second clip. In order to do that, I'm going to add a new adjustment layer and make that adjustment layer six frames long. And in order to create the shake effect, no plugins or presets are required. If you go on After Effects and just search up Wiggle on the Effects and Presets tab, we're going to drag the wiggle position onto this adjustment layer. I'm going to increase the wiggle speed to 40 and increase the wiggle amount to 100 because I want to create this really intense shake effect between the first clip into the second clip by adding this wiggle effect to this adjustment layer it does create a transparent background in order to fix that we're just going to add a motion tile to the second scene i'm going to increase both the output width as well as the output height to 400 and make sure to click mirror edges now as you guys can see there is no transparent background and in order to create that flash effect i'm going to add an exposure to this adjustment layer keyframe the exposure at four in the middle and then go towards the beginning keyframe the exposure at zero and then keyframe the end at zero as well grab those keyframes easy ease them so now if we play this we have that shake flash effect between the first clip as well as the second clip there's just always movement as well as energy happening within those two scenes and then moving on to the final transition in order to add energy to these scenes what i'm going to do is create a slide transition from the second scene into the third scene in order to do that i'm going to keyframe the position and i'm going to go back five frames keyframe the position at its original position and then go forward four frames and then i'm going to keyframe the position where it animates towards the left and because this is going to be a really fast slide transition you definitely want these values to be at a higher number that should be good enough there's no exact number but you definitely want it to be higher just so that we create a faster and seamless transition between these two clips grab these two layers easy ease them and move it towards the end so that it happens right where the cut happens between these two scenes and make sure to have the motion blur on i'm going to then go into the graph editor of these position keyframes and have the influence at 100 so it animates slow in the beginning and then it animates out fast we're going to then keyframe the position of our third layer keyframe the position at its original position and bring that keyframe four frames forward and because we're creating this slide transition we're going to need to add a motion tile effect to this third layer we can do that by just going to the pre-compose layer click the motion tile effect click ctrl c click the third layer click ctrl Control V in order to copy and paste that motion tile effect to this third layer. And now we're just going to keyframe the position where it animates in the same direction as the layer before. So I'm going to have mine like that. Grab these keyframes, easy ease them, and make sure to have the motion blur on for that layer as well as the adjustment layer. Just have the motion blur on for all of your layers and then go into the graph editor of the position keyframes. Have the influence at 100% so that it animates in fast at the beginning and then it animates out slow. I'm going to then grab the adjustment layer of of the shake flash effect click ctrl d in order to duplicate that layer bring that layer above all the other layers and just bring it in between the second as well as the third layer and now if we play this we have a lot of energy as well as movement happening within these three different scenes and that is all there is for this tutorial if you guys found this video helpful please leave a like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video